My name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 108. Day 3108. 3 is to signify that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 108. We are on the topic of probability. And this is the eighth video in the series of 15 total that, that we will have fifth, out of 15 lessons. This is the eighth one. The problem, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. We have three individuals, A, B, and C, and we are told that the probability that A can hit a target, which is represented here with B, with the, with the, with the person A, probability that A can hit a target is the third, probability that B can hit a target is the fourth, probability that C can hit a target is a fifth. And most importantly, we are told further that they work independently. All three of these individuals work independently, which is very important to keep in mind. In other words, the odds of A hitting the target has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with how B and C performed. And how B performs, whether, whether or not B manages to hit the target, has absolutely nothing to do with how A and C perform and so on and so forth. Do you understand? They work independently. There are five parts to this problem. What are the odds that they will all succeed? What is the probability that nobody will succeed? What are the odds that at least one of these individuals will succeed? What are the odds that exactly one of these three individuals will succeed? And what are the odds that exactly two out of these three individuals will succeed? What I will do now is to give you five seconds for you to be able to pause and unpause the video. Pause the video, do the problem yourself, and once you have done so, then compare your work against the work that you and I are about to do in a few seconds time. Okay? I'll give you five seconds to be able to pause and unpause the video. Well, let's take a look at it. Well, the first two parts are quite straightforward. The odds that they will all succeed, because they are working independently, is simply the product of the three probability. Part A, part A, the odds that they all succeed, is simply the prob product of the three probability of their chances of success. Um, I know it's a, it's a bit redundant what I just said, but you get the idea. The, cha the odds that A will succeed, we are told, is one third. B has a one fourth chance, 25 percent chance, and C only has a 20 percent chance. There we go, there's your answer. The answer is one out of 60. One out of 60. 1 out of 50 would have been 2%, 1 out of 50 would have been exactly 2%, so the odds that they will all succeed is less than 20%, uh, less than 2% rather, it's less than 2%, so as, as we said before, 1 out of 50 would have been exactly 2%. What are the odds that none succeed? What are the odds that none succeeds? None succeeds. Well, it's the same situation as before, No, actually it's not uh, to, uh, that. I'm, I'm confusing here. We'll, we'll kind of get to that because I was about to do. See, that's why you have to pay attention. What I was about to do is part C, where at least one succeeds, which we'll see in a second how that relates to this. Why don't we do that? Let's do part C. Part C. Part C says at least one succeeds. At least one succeeds. The odds that at least one succeed is equal to one minus the odd, one minus the odd that they all fail. Oh, never mind, never mind. We have to do this one first. None succeed, they all fail. I'm jumping ahead of myself. Part B, the odds that none succeeds, which is same as saying they all fail. The odds that they all fail, again, because they are working independently, therefore, the odds that A will fail, which is, which is represented with A with a bar on the top, is, is this thing right here, and the odds that B will fail is B with the bar on the top, and the C will fail is this, and again, the odds that they will all fail is simply the product of these three probability because they are working independently. And since A has a chance of one-third chance of being successful, 
since A has one third chance of being successful, therefore there's a two third chance that he will fail. Since B has one quarter chance of being successful, he has a three quarter chance of failing. And similarly, C has a one fifth chance of hitting the target, therefore there's a four fifth chance that he will not hit the target. There we go, they will all fail. Let's see what we can do. Three goes away, four goes away, oh there we go, it's two out of five. There is a 40% chance, there is a 40% chance that they will all fail, that they will all bomb, that none of these people will manage to hit the target, given this probability. What are the odds that at least one, what are the odds that, let's do it on the top so I don't have to read out everything, let's do it on the top here. Part C, what are the odds that at least, at least one succeeds, at least one succeeds. The odds that at least one of these fellows succeeds out of the three is same as one minus the odds that they all fail. One minus the odds that they all fail. And we just found out the odds of all of them failing. Odds of all of them failing is 40%. Odds of all of them failing is 40%. Therefore, 1 minus the odds that they all fail is simply going to be 60%. Voila. This is the odds that they will all fail. And therefore, the odds that at least one of them will succeed is simply 1 minus the odds that they will all fail. That's all. Let's do part D. Part D is asking for the odds that exactly one will succeed. Part D is asking us for the odds that exactly one succeeds. How do we find that out? Any idea? I'm going to have to probably erase the plus bit since we're done with A or C. Part B is what we're doing here. Since we're done with, since we're done with A, B, and C, let's erase it because I'm going to need more room here. We're going to need more room here to continue this way because I don't want to write it in two lines. How do we figure out the odds that exactly one individual succeeds? Well, the odds that one individual succeeds is goes like something like this, which is the odds that A succeeds but B fails and C fails. That's one possibility. See here, A is a successful one or it's possible that A fails but B succeeds and C also fails. That's another possibility. Or the odds that A fails B also fails, but C succeeds. So I'm going to put them in a different color so we can actually make it easier for us to see. So the bar on the top means they're going to fail. This guy is going to fail, this guy is going to fail, but A is going to succeed. In the second scenario, A is going to fail, C is going to fail, it is the B who is successful. In the third scenario, it is the C that is who is successful, A and B fail. And the sum of these three probability is what we're looking for. And again, the odds that only A will succeed, this part represents, the first part represents the odds that only A will succeed, but B and C will fail. If the question were to ask us, what are the odds that A will succeed? What the, if the question were to ask us, what are the odds that only A succeeds? This is how we would have figured it out, only this part. The odds that only B will succeed is this part. And the odds that only C will succeed is this part. And again, the odds that only A will succeed is simply the probability of these three events, uh, is simply the product of the probability of these three events, because these three individuals, we are told, work independently. That's the important part. It's important to know that they work independently, otherwise we cannot do what we're doing here. So let's finish here. Well, unfortunately, I erased the odds. Oh, actually, I think it was very easy. I think it was a one-third, one-fourth, and one-fifth. There you go. One third, one fourth, and one fifth. We just have to con so concentrate. I have to pay attention here. So here we go. So the odds that A will succeed is one third. Odds that B will fail, the odds of B's success was one fourth. So it's going to be three quarters. The odds that C succeeds is one fifth. So there's a four fifth chance that he will fail. 
So that part is done. The odds that A would succeed was one third, therefore the chances that he will fail is two thirds. The odds that B would succeed is was one third, one fourth. It was one fourth. And odds that C will fail, it was one third, one fourth, and one fifth, therefore C has a four fifth chance of failing. The odds that A will fail, again A had one third chance of, of being successful, he has two third chance therefore of not hitting the target. B had one quarter chance of being successful, therefore he has a three quarter chance, 75% chance that he will not hit a target. And C, we were told, has a fifth of a chance of hitting the target, of being successful. And that's all it is. We just have to simplify. That's all it is. Let's again do it in a different color so we can make it easier to see. Anything we can do here? There we go. The fours are going to cancel away and three is going to go away. So it's just a fifth. It's just a fifth. Fifth. Plus, now let's do this part. So that's just a fifth. One over five right here. One fifth. That's the first part. Anything else we can do here? The 4 is going to go away and it's going to be 2 out of 15. 2 out of 15. Let's do the third one here. So we're looking at the odds of exactly 1 succeeding. Since I erased everything, let's line them up properly so it makes it easier. So this was 2 out of 15. And finally, anything we can do here? Well, 3 is going to go away, and 2 is going to cancel out with the 4 becoming 2, so it's 1 out of 10. 1 out of 10. We simply have to add them up. Let's add them up, but before we can add them up, we need to have a common denominator. The common denominator, I see a common denominator of 30. 30 would work. Let's make this 30. Let's multiply this guy by 6 over 6. Let's multiply this guy by 2 over 2. Let's can multiply this guy by 3 over 3. And now we have a common denominator of 30. And that's it, we're almost done. So we have 6 plus 4 is 10, 10 plus 3 is 13. The answer is 13 out of 30. 13 out of 30, or if you like, less than 50% chance. There is a less than 50% chance that exactly one individual will hit the target. It's more than likely, it's more than likely, the odds are more than 50% that we'll have either two or all three individuals hitting the target. The odds are less than 50% that exactly one will hit the target. Do you understand? Let's do the second one. How about the odds that exactly two succeed? Exactly two succeed. Not much is gonna change. It's gonna be the same as before. We want two of the people to succeed now. So let's make A and B to be successful and let's C to be the failure. In this case, let's make A, A and A and A and C to be successful, and let's B to be the failure guy, failing guy. And then third time, see this is C fails, B fail. Let's make A fail, and B and C. See, ordinarily, I would have let's let's do it. Let's do it the way. Let's do, it, let's do it the way. Let's do it, let's do it the way they are, that I prefer, which is more systematic, because the way I was going about it was going in the reverse order: C, B, and E. I don't like it. Let's go in order. Let's make the in the first scenario, the first guy fails. In the first scenario, the first guy is going to fail. In the second scenario, second guy is going to fail. In the third scenario, third guy is going to fail. If the third guy fails, then this scenario C fails, but A and B succeed. B fails, but A and C succeed. You see, exactly two succeed. A fails, but B and C succeed. Again, the same work as before, and we simply have to add, add them up, and that's all it is. Let's do it together, shall we? Nothing changes. Once we understand what's going on, it's very straightforward, very simple. It's just a matter of, it's just a matter of brute force, just having to put in the labor and find the answer. But other than that, there is not, there is not much in it. There is no trick here. The odds that A will fail, A we were told has one third chance of, of, of succeeding and therefore he has two third chance of failing. One quarter chance that B will hit the target, one fifth chance that C will hit the target. A had a one third chance of hitting the target, B had one quarter chance of hitting the target, therefore he has a three quarter chance that he will fail. 
and C has one fifth chance of hitting the target. A has one third chance of, of hitting the target. B has one quarter chance of hitting the target. C had, has one fifth chance of hitting the target. Therefore, there is a four fifth chance, 80 percent chance that he will not hit the target. And that's all. Again, we just have to simplify. We just have to simplify and then we are done. And hopefully, the answer will match with what I have in, the, in my notes. Let's do it together, shall we? So what can we do here? Oh, there, you go, there is a goal. There is a two goals over here. And we end up with two times three is six and one out of, one out of 30. So that's the, that's the first scenario where A fails, but the other two succeed. Three is going to go over here. It's one out of, one out of 20. Four times five. Uh, four is going to go away, three times five, one out of fifteen. Let's add them up, shall we? Let's add them up. We need a common denominator again. And let's pick a common denominator of sixty. I think that's the least least common denominator that I can find. The smallest number that happens to be multiple of thirty, twenty, and fifteen is sixty. Let's make common denominator to be sixty. Multiply this first guy by two over two. Let's multiply this guy by three over three. Let's multiply this guy by 4 over 4, and we are almost done. And we are almost done. 2 times 1 is 2, 2 plus 3 is, two plus three is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. It is 9 out of 60, 9 out of 60, let's reduce it, let's reduce it, which can be 3, out of, three times 3 and 3 times 20, 3 is going to cancel away, and it's 3 times 3 over 3 over 20. Once we have the 3 over 20, let's multiply that that guy by 5 over 5, and we end up with 15 over 100. In other words, the odds are exactly 50. Per, odds are exactly 15 percent. Odds are exactly 15 percent that exactly two individual will hit the target, or to put the other way around, that the exactly one individual will not hit the target. It's the same thing. That's all that we had here. That's all we had here. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.